Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, the gift of the risen Lord is the gift of faith. And faith always nourishes and strengthens us. And so to prepare ourselves to receive this gift of faith in this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, You raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, restorer and lover of innocence, direct the hearts of your servants towards yourself, that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church 
as well as by the apostles and the presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees, who had become believers, stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it, the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Please stand. I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples." Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. 
my dear brothers and sisters, we see in the image of the brine of the branch and the vine, we see here an imagery of faith, faith that nourishes, faith that gives life, faith that bears fruit. Ang larawan na ginamit ni Jesus sa ating Ebanghelyo, ang puno at ang mga sanga, ito ay nagpapakita sa atin na ang pananampalataya ay dapat nagbibigay buhay at nagkakaroon din ng bunga sa buhay ng marami, sa buhay ng ibang tao. That is why Jesus said in our gospel reading, If you remain in me, then you will bear much fruit. But if you separate yourself from me, then you will die, and the branches will die, and it will not bear fruit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us be reminded today of that work of faith the purpose of faith, and that is to nourish, to give life, to give growth. Yan ang papel ng pananampalataya, ang magbigay lakas, patibayin ang ibang tao, magbigay bunga sa buhay ng maraming tao. This is the opposite of what we heard in our first reading today. If Jesus said in the gospel reading today that faith nourishes and gives life, in the first reading, some groups in the church have weaponized the faith to hurt and attack other members of the church. Sa unang pagbasa natin, nakita natin na ang ibang miyembro ng simbahan, imbes na magbigay buhay at palakasin ang pananampalataya ng miyembro ng simbahan, ginamit nila ang pananampalataya para saktan at atakihin ang iba sa loob ng simbahan. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is reminding us today, stop weaponizing the faith. Do not weaponize the faith to attack people. Marami sa atin ngayon, ginagamit ang pananampalataya para manakit at hindi para magbigay buhay. How many posts in social media do I see today of fellow Catholics? In fact, fellow ministers and servants of the church they use their name, ministers, directors, commissioners, experts. But what do they do in social media? They sow division. They sow hurt. They weaponize the faith. That is not the work of Jesus. Jesus inspires. He does not attack. Jesus proposes. He does not impose. Jesus inspires and he does not hurt. My dear brothers and sisters, let us stop this trend in our church of using the faith as a weapon, 
let us stop weaponizing the faith to hurt. Instead, like Jesus, let us use the faith to inspire. That is the work of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist, we come here to be inspired. And after being inspired by Jesus through the Word and the sacrament, we go out so that we could not hurt people. We would not weaponize the Word, but instead, let us use the Word to inspire many. Amen. Please stand. As one body of worshipers in the Lord, we bring our needs with confidence before God and our Father. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unity which comes from Christ, the true vine, may draw all Christians to his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That priests, religious, and missionaries may be committed to their vocation in the church and remain united with Christ in their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those tried by life's difficulties may be faithful to Christ and his gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may see Christ as the source of strength and healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may remain in Christ forever, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, without you, we can do nothing. Hear our prayers and keep us in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, hosts Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our healing rosary for this evening will be hosted by the Diocesan Shrine of Mahal na Birhen ng Biglang Awa in Boac, Marinduque. We thank their community for hosting this evening's prayer in front of the canonically crowned image of Our Lady. At 9 p.m. this evening, let us come together so that we could continue praying the Holy Rosary for the healing of the world.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.